Hello everyone and welcome back to the Beginner Ruby series. This is going to be the final video before we can start doing a couple of practice projects. So in this one, we're just going to be uh, talking about that concept we left off previously, which is arrays. These are going to be a way for you to have a list of things that you can then like use those things for. So let's say we had like a list of colors. So we'll say, um, I don't know, first color is equal to red. Then we can do a second color is equal to blue, third color is equal to green, uh, and you get the idea, right? Like dot, 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 and then our nth color is equal to black. Now we don't wanna have to go through all of these uh, nth variables, because then when we come down here and we want to put our colors, right? We can put the first color, the second color, the third color, dot, 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 all the way up until our nth color. We're gonna be here for a long time. Because what happens if we have like a thousand colors? We're gonna have to put each one of these individually, right? So now let's go ahead and let's run this. Now this is our ninth episode. So let me CD into our ninth episode and then we'll run this with our RB, main.rb. You can see right here, our colors are red, blue, green, and black, right? And this is our, our nth color. So there might be an infinite number between green and black before we get here. But okay, what's a better way to do this? Well, we can actually just do something called my colors list, which is gonna be equal to, and then inside of some square brackets right here, we have our first color, comma, our second color, comma, our third color, comma, our fourth color. So these brackets allow us to just list off basically uh, items that are comma separated, similar to like a comma separated file, like Excel lets you export, where you have like that, that whole list of things that's just separated by commas that you can then feed into another program. This is very similar, but it allows us to create a list here that are all stored inside of this my colors list. So let's say, we want to have our colors again. So our colors are now, and then we can do like, let's do our red color. We'll say puts my colors list. So if we print this right now, you'll see we get red, blue, green, and black, just like we did before, which is very weird. How does it know to do that? Well, a little bit of magic, right? But what happens if we only want to get red out of this? Well, to do that, we can open up those square brackets again, and then we can access an element in this array just by typing a number. Now, if we type a number in here, let's say we want to do one to get our first one, right? You might notice that that returns blue. So we see blue right here. I want you to go back to when we did our loops, where we had those loops that we printed off the numbers, right? Our, our three dot times do loop. Let's copy this over here and let's just put this right here and then let's uncomment this. So we'll say three dot times do counter puts the counter is counter. If we run this, because we want to run this code three times, the program actually starts by doing the loop at zero, then one and then two. So you can see it starts here at zero. So that probably tells us that the same thing is happening right here. We're starting at zero in this list, which means when we put in one, we're actually getting the second item after the commas, right? So right here is blue. So let's try turning this into a zero and then let's access this. And now we can see we get red. So what we can do is we can say, all right, let's put, uh, or let's leave this right here and let's just comment this out for now. And then let's come down here and we'll say, let's grab the first one, let's grab the second one the third one and the fourth one. And just like before, we can put the fourth one right here, but we'll run into a different error. We get our red, our blue, our green, our black, and then we just get nothing here. Because four is technically the four plus one item in here, which is five, we go one, two, three, four, and then there is no five. So this, this four right here is actually not necessary. So we can just leave it like this and we can get red, blue, green, and black. But okay, what if we don't want to do it like this? We can see right here that our counter was already lining up with these numbers, right? We already had the zero, we had the one, we had the two, oops, the two. So really, if we move this up to a four times, we could just get it like that. So let's try that, let's uncomment this. Let's say four times 
puts the color is, and then in here, let's grab the my colors list. And let's try it like this. So let me clear this console. Let me run this. We'll see the colors list right here. Let me comment these out as well. Uh, is equal to the color is red, the color is red, the color is red, and the color is red. So why is that? Well, because here we're using zero instead of our counter number. So let's grab this counter and put this in the square brackets. So now when this prints off zero for counter and one and two and three, that'll actually go in here. And now if we run this, we can see that when the counter is zero, it gets the red one, which is our first one. When it's one, it gets the second one. When it's two, it gets the third one. And when it's three, it gets the fourth one because programmers and math don't really get along. But let's go ahead and let's print off our counter as well. The counter is counter, just to make sure that you can see what's happening here. So when the counter is zero, the color is red. When the counter is one, the color is blue. When the counter is two, the color is green. When the counter is three, the color is black. So this right here allows us to print off all of these items as you would expect. But there's other ways that we can do this. So instead, instead of um, accessing the uh, array by the number, uh, we we can access it by uh, value. So what does that mean? Well, we can come in here and our array is called my colors list. So we can say my colors list dot each do, and then we can name this variable. I'm gonna call it color. You could call it apple cart. You could even call this counter if you want to. But now watch what happens when we print the color variable here. It's gonna do the same thing because under the hood, it understands that you're going through each item in your list and it's just going to put each item into a thing called whatever you want here. We could change this to counter if we want to. Just remember, if you change this variable to counter, you have to change this one to counter as well. Now let's try this and you can see that works too because ultimately you're just naming whatever this temporary variable is and then you're just using it a couple times. But this right here is really powerful because this lets us do things for however many things we have in our list. And it just instantly grabs them for us in a way that we can like use these things. But let's say we still wanna print off that counter right here, right? Because if we move this, if we change this back to a color and then we change this to a color, if we now try to print off our counter, it seems like we're a little bit limited here. So if we try this and we run this, you'll see undefined local variable or method counter. So the counter here is not defined. How can we define it? Well, what we can actually do here is we can come down, let me comment this out. We can say dot each, and we can actually grab this. Uh, let's say we want each color and the index or the counter, whatever you want to call it. So we can actually say each with index, with underscores, do, and then we first name our color, which is the thing in our list. So that's gonna be red, blue, green, and black, comma, our index. So now we have two variables. And now we can print off each of these variables. So let's go ahead and let's try this. The index is zero, the color is red, the index is one, the color is blue, the index is two, the color is green, the index is three, the color is black. And this right here is really useful in a myriad of different ways. But the main thing that this allows you to do is not have to, you know, type all of this nonsense up here each time. And that's really what you want out of your language is to have ways, uh, maybe different ways to do the same thing. But some of those ways save you a lot of time and effort and make things a little bit more readable. We can see right here, we have our colors list, which I'll just redefine right here. And then all we're saying is, for each color in my colors list, give me the index with that color. So we have our color with our index, and then we just wanna do some stuff with that, right? We run it and we just get those results. What this is gonna allow you to do is maybe if you don't have a list of colors, but you have like a list of users, you could then say like for each user, give me the user and the index. And then you can say for each user, email the user a happy birthday card, 
uh, from like the car insurance company or whatever. That's not something that you're necessarily going to be doing right now because you probably don't have a list of users, but hopefully that gives you an idea of how some of these tools can be used further down the line. Assuming you have an email system where you can easily email someone and you have a list of users, you give the user to the email system. It sends out the email. So you go through each user and then you just send it to the email system and ta-da, it just works, right? There's a couple steps I might be omitting there, but of course, uh, you kind of have to give and take when you when you cover things uh, at a beginner level. But the good news is, this is probably one of the more difficult topics to uh, to cover when you're first learning things. And I mean, arrays will come up time and time again, so you really want to get comfortable with these. That's why we're going to be stepping back and doing some exercises after this. But there's one other thing I want to talk about because these aren't just lists that can you know only be used in this way. Another thing we can do is we can comment this out. We have our list of colors here. Let's take this list of colors and let's add something to it. So I'm gonna say puts adding the, a color to the list, right? And then I want to uh, add the color purple. Now there's a couple ways to do that. We can say my colors, let me scroll down a bit, my colors list, and you could say five is equal to purple, or actually this should be four, not five. Four is equal to purple. And then if we run this, we'll of course see adding a color to the list, but we don't see this color. So let's go ahead and let's just print off uh, the colors list here. Adding a color to the list, red, blue, green, black, and purple. So that's interesting. We now have that in there allegedly. Let's copy this loop and put it down here again and uncomment it. So let's remove this colors list and instead let's just print each of these. As soon as we print these, we can see that the four and the purple are now printing out. So even by modifying our list, by adding a new item to it, this just magically works, right? Now let's try uh, puts removing, removing uh, a color from the list. So we can say my colors list delete at two. And you can already guess what that's going to do. Do you think that's going to do the blue color, which is our second color, or the color at index two, which would be green? So let's see if blue or green are missing from this list. We can come down here again, my colors list each do, puts the index, puts the color. I'm going to comment out this uh, iteration here. We're going to keep the purple bit, but we're going to delete afterwards. So let's go ahead and let's run this and see what happens. So we get the index is zero, the color is red, makes sense. Red was the zeroth one. The index is one, the color is blue, so we still have blue, but now when the index is two, the color is black, so it's skipping green now. Because when we delete it two, we're actually deleting at zero, one, two from our list. So now our entire list is red, blue, black, and purple, red, blue, black, and purple. So that's sort of how those things work. And there's other things you can do with your list. You can sort it, you can manipulate it in various ways. But for right now, I only want you to focus on being able to add things to it, remove things from it, how to actually make a list, and then how to like use the list. The rest of it will come over time. You'll be exposed to it. You might see people doing things to a list you haven't seen before. And at that point, all I want you to do just pull open like a, a window, go over to Google and just ask like, what does is, what is something do? Cause like there's so many different methods here. It would be overwhelming to expect you to uh, like understand everything you can do with these arrays. There's just too much. So for now, I'm just gonna leave you here and then we'll take a look at some example programs where we can do small projects to get you up and running. They're not gonna be big or scary. You're probably gonna think they're a little bit too simple, but it's a good exercise to look at a problem and then say, how can I solve this? Do I have a rough idea of how to solve it? And then you can follow along while I solve it to sort of build up that confidence. Because unfortunately, just like with math, the only way to really understand how to program is to fail at doing it like a hundred times and then eventually you'll start to gain that confidence. So for now, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.